Explore the history, relationships, expertise, and data that go into ensuring Stein growers get maximum yield potential. This is the Stein Seedcast. Here's your host, David Thompson. Hello, and welcome to the Stein Seedcast. I'm your host, David Thompson, National Marketing and Sales Director for Stein Seed Company. We've got another great episode lined up with special guests, expert insights, and discussion on everything you need to know about maximizing yield potential. Today, we welcome Mike Tweedy, Vice President and Head of Sales for Pattern Ag, to the show. Pattern Ag offers growers an advanced soil analysis program to help them optimize crop protection and fertility plans. Thanks so much for joining us today, Mike. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Stein is excited to be partnering with Pattern Ag for the 2023 season to offer select customers advanced soil analysis to help them identify potential pests such as corn rootworm, soybean cyst nematode, and more. Mike's going to explain how this analysis works and how we can use this data to optimize cropping practices and crop input selections. So let's get started. So, Mike, thanks for joining us today. Um, normally, I like to start the show by doing a little background set. So, tell us about your background. Yeah, so I grew up on a uh, multi-generational farm in southern Illinois, founded in the early 1800s. So, agriculture's literally been in my roots for my entire life. Got my bachelor's and master's in agronomy at Southern Illinois University and have worked in the uh, ag sector my entire 29-year career both with large multinational companies and in the startup space, and most recently came to Pattern um, in March of 2021. So the service that Pattern offers is, is certainly uh, is unique in its own right, but there are other solutions out there that growers are using today. So I guess how, when you talk to growers about what Pattern's solutions are, how do you frame that in the framework of, because they may already be using another solution and what separates Pattern from those? Yeah, there's a few things that separate us from anything else that's out there. There's nobody doing quite like what we're doing, both in terms of the metadata that we're collecting on that field, the full uh, the full biology, but it's really the intuitiveness and this preciseness of what we're providing back to them. We're very focused on the things that, in, uh, that impact top end yield, pathogens that impact top end yield. And so we put a sharp focus on identifying those very specific things and then turning that around into a platform very fast, by the way, a two-week turnaround on a DNA sequencing event is a, is a very fast turnaround. And then, um, but the intuitiveness of, the, of what we provide back is really what makes us unique. You don't have to have a PhD to look at the, you know, a big DNA sequencing report to determine what I need to do. You can look at, at a glance, in a matter of minutes, field by field, specifically what your threat levels are, what the beneficials are, and then inform decisions on what need to be made on those fields. So Pattern started in 2020. 2018. Yeah, 2018. So tell us a little bit about Pattern as, a, as an organization. Yeah, Pattern was, it's a very interesting company because it was founded on the belief that we could look into the soil biology and lead us to the next uh, agricultural revolution. Soil biology is something that we just know very little about. It is the most complex microbiome on earth. Literally half of what we pick up in the soil microbiome hasn't even been discovered yet. And so Pattern was founded with the belief that we could map the soil microbiome and begin to answer questions and solve problems for growers that, uh, that are plaguing them today. So at a very simple, fundamental level, we started with, you know, looking at corn and soybeans. So we are exclusively a corn and soybean-focused company right now. And what we want to do is look at the things that are impacting top-end yield. You know, there's a saying that farmers have 40 years to guess right. And there's so much guessing that goes on in seed selection. Do I need a seed treatment? Do I need... Uh, you know, what? what is the optimum fertility levels that I need? And so what we look to do is unlock those things and make the unknown known. So how it would work is basically growers have to submit soil samples and those samples get tested and, and uh, your process determines some of the things that are embedded in that soil profile. What, what are some of the things that could be identified? Yeah, so we started looking at, we started with uh, crop protection things like corn rootworm, soybean cyst nematode, sudden death syndrome, 
Uh, we not only tell the presence, but the pressure of those pathogens in the soil. And then a, a, a number of different diseases and biofertility attributes. So we don't just look at the bad things, we look at the good things. And so the process is really simple. We come out, we sample the soil, it goes to our lab. We turn the results around in two weeks. And then you'll have uh, insights, really simple insights and recommendations on seed selection, whether you need a seed treatment for the next year or not. So we're really doing predictive analytics for the next to upcoming season. And it seems to me like you just mentioned predictive analytics. That seems to be maybe the real divining point between maybe what Pattern Ag is working on versus some of the other solutions. Because obviously there's other things that people have used to rely on to determine with corn root worm, for example. Uh, how is this a different solution? It's a great question, and it gets to the fundamentals of what we do that is different than what uh, has historically been done. So today, if you want to determine, for example, if you have corn root worm or not, it's really via an, an autopsy, right? So we're looking at corn root worm damage, we're looking at, you know, utilizing the root node injury scale. Uh, we're looking at things like, you know, are there beetles present in the field? But there's really nothing that you can do about it to help that crop that year. That damage has already been done. What we do is we fo our soil samplers follow the combines out of the field post-harvest, and then we pull the samples out of the soil, send them off to our labs, because by then the corn rootworm will have already laid its eggs for the next season. We can tell with high precision and high predictability whether that they're going to have a problem in that field, which would then determine, do I need a above, above and below ground protection? Or could I plant a conventional hybrid because there is no corn rootworm presence? So that would be an example. And so correct me if I'm wrong. So really what you're doing is you, you're taking corn rootworm, for example, larva, uh, which occur in the soil. You already know what that, what the DNA is of that, uh, of that uh, larva. And so in a soil sample, then you're going out and looking for, am I finding that same DNA sequence in the soil profile? If I am then I assume that means I have larva in the soil and it is a potential problem. Is that kind of it? Yeah, we're specifically looking for the eggs. So um, what we do is we take samples of either Western or Northern because we can determine either one of the two, which is really important because that tells you whether you've got extended diapause or not and how to manage those, those fields going forward. But we, we sequence, we DNA sequence the entire uh, pathogen. And so we look for very specific marker genes. So when they come in and they go through our sequencing process, we're looking for those marker genes and then we can determine if they're there and then how many eggs are present in the, um, in the soil. So we can, our sensitivity is down to a single egg in a, a composite soil sample we can detect. A single egg in a sample. Yep. That's pretty precise. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get any more precise than that. So talk a little bit about the sampling process. So, because there's obviously, depending on what you're doing, there's different ways to sample a given field. How do you guys recommend, for a grower who's uh, using your service, how do you go about telling them, this is how we want to sample that field? Yeah, so if, um, it's one of the most critical parts of the process because what we want to do is we want to ensure if the pathogen or whatever we're looking for is out there, we want to find it. So we have a very dense sampling protocol. So our typical sampling protocol is on 10-acre grids, and we pull 12 to 14 samples in each one of those 10-acre grids, which gives you a sampling density of a, less than one acre. And then we put that into a composite sample. So it goes into a single bag, and then that's what goes through the process at our lab, this, the, uh, the homogenization, this, uh, the sequencing, and so forth. And then you get a readout at the end that tells you what is in that composite sample. So the composite sample is that 10-acre grid. So Correct. For, for a given field, you're going to have these various composite samples, and that identifies this is zones, if you will, that you're working with in that field. Correct. And we need it to be that dense because, uh, like I said, if the pathogen is there, we want to find it. What we most often find is that when pathogens exist in a field, it isn't over the entire field. It's over a portion of the field. And so, you know, we want to be able to determine the presence and pressure in each one of those parts of the field. So, and again, depending on what you're sampling for, there are different... Um, different requirements and different timings. So for the services that you're doing, you know, 
what's the advisable timing for sampling these fields? We really want to be following the combine out of the field post-harvest. So when, when that field is harvested, the dealer or the grower can go in, press a button and say, this field is ready to be sampled and we'll be out there within two to five days, barring any weather events. And then we two days ship those out to our lab in California. We don't subcontract anything out once it goes to our lab. We have a very automated process that it goes through and we can turn those results around in about two weeks. And the reason why that's important is because seed buying decisions are being made in the fall for the next season, right? So when when growers come to sit down with the Stein uh, dealer or the Stein representative, you're gonna have insights and information to say, okay, you've got corn rootworm or you don't have corn rootworm, you've got su uh, sudden death syndrome or you don't have sudden death syndrome. And so here's what I'm going to recommend that you plant for next year. So they can get those results back and like you said, start making seed selections uh, based on the trait mix that they may need. Yeah, and that, that is one of the most critical success factors for the next season is choosing the right hybrid, variety, trait, and seed treatment uh, if you're going to need those things or not. So having that predictive analytics allows you to make those decisions in a much more informed way. And what I like about it is, like you said, it's predictive analysis based on data that you're seeing as opposed to saying, well, let's you know wait till next summer. We'll do, you know, sticky traps, we'll do monitoring, we'll see what shows up. Or saying, well, in my area, I've been told that, you know, rootworm is a big problem or yeah. whatever. Well, that's sort of anecdotal, right? Yep. So this is very precise and it gives you not only presence, but density of presence, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah, it, it's the gold standard in determining if these things are present and what you need to do to protect yourself and protect that crop to get that top end yield. We're not even close to achieving top end yield. Uh, potent, you know, the yield potential that we have on corn hybrids is greater than 500 bushels and we're no, nowhere near close to that. So what we're doing is we're predictively identifying those things that are knocking that top end yield down so that we can push it up. For growers who participate in the services that you offer, how does that information come back to them? Yeah, that's that's really the magic behind what we do. Um, DNA analysis in and of itself is not novel or new, and sequencing is generates a lot of data. Our bioinformatics platform on the back end is really what takes the super complex and makes it really intuitive, simple insight, uh, provides simple insights and recommendations. So once it goes through the sequencing process, we're doing about 10 million reads per uh, sequencing event, right? Your typical soil analysis today is about 10 data points. We're doing 10 million. We're picking up about 500 billion microbes, about 10,000 species. So what we do then on the back end is we take that super complex data and we turn it around because we're looking for very specific things. And we built a data platform, or we built a, uh, a platform that is very simple and intuitive. So when the uh, results are available and ready, the grower gets an email, you can log in, the dealer gets an email, you can go log in, you can take a look at, at a glance, because we use color coding and we use bar graphs at a glance, if the presence and the pressures of each one of these, and then you can go in, you can dive in with just a one or two clicks and say, okay, here's what I need to do. Um, I've got five, five uh, decisions that I can make just off of this uh, one read right here. So in addition to the information you also get, you know, some, whether you call them recommendations or, or at the very least some actionable intelligence that's coming out of that, that data. Yeah, that's correct. Look, the data in and of itself is interesting. It's what you can do with that. So we make it very, very simple and intuitive where anybody can look at it and understand what they need to do and make very fast decisions on, you know, things like hybrid or seed trait or seed decisions and seed treatment decisions. So that's the magic behind what we do. The science is amazing, but the simplicity of our platform is what makes it really user-friendly. Because like you said, those decisions seem to happen in a very quick time frame. And so, <laughs> you know, when you get into the fall, uh, it, it, the timing is short and, and everybody's got to make seed decisions. So, yeah, having that in a clearly defined way is probably paramount. Yep. Yeah. Fast turnaround is critical. So we've talked a little bit here about some of your services being 
the corner worm and the SCN pressure panels, which is something that, you know, we're most familiar with from a Stein standpoint. We're going to talk about some things at Stein that we're doing with you guys. But I know you have other services. So what are some of the other things that you are doing for farmers through your services, your, your soil analysis? Yeah, we've got really three products that we offer to growers. The first one is one that you were discussing, which is, we call it the pressure panel, which is corn root worm, cyst nematode, and sudden death syndrome which are not trivial problems that exist in a field, and uh, you need to know those to be able to make some very critical decisions. But we also offer what's called a performance panel, which um, is equally as important because we identify a number of different diseases like Fusarium, Phytophthora, Pythium, Rhizoctonia, Anthracnose, white mold, brown stem rot, soybean stem canker, things like that that are, you know, when when those are also present, you can actually get a synergistic effect of multiple pathogens in the same field. So those inform things like variety decisions, they inform things like hybrid decisions and seed treatment as well. So those are critically important. And then we look at biofertility attributes. So, you know, do I, uh, you know, do I have denitrification occurring in my field? Do I need a nitrogen stabilizer? Do I need a, an inoculant? What's my phosphorus solubilizing capability of the soil, you know? And do I need to add a biological product uh, to that field so that I can mine the phosphorus that's in the soil? So those are all critical decisions as well. And then the third product that we added really was a, a courtesy to our dealers and growers who decided that they didn't want to send uh, two different soil samples out to two different labs. So we added a Malik 3 test. We call it the pro-nutrient panel. And that is uh, all your micros and macros. So that's a traditional chemistry test. And then, uh, but the, the things that make us different as a company is the performance panel and the pressure panel. So now you can do, with your service, you can do the fertility test like you normally would, but you can get these other services added into that as well. Yeah, and when you stack all of that data together, our, our, you know, our data science team really can ha go to work on creating a full 360-degree view of what's happening in your soil. Because again, the biology is the thing that we don't understand very well today. Uh, the chemistry, you can, you can get that anywhere, uh, but stacking all of that data together is super valuable. So we talked about corn worm, SCN, SDS, are there other pests on the radar that you guys are looking into that? Yeah, we'll be adding additional pests and, you know, we're looking at some abo above ground pathogens, um, you know, to come in probably 2023, we're going to be beta testing those. But one thing that's critical that I want to communicate to the to your audience is whenever we add a new pathogen, it automatically turns on in past reports. So we take biology and we turn it into data that goes into the cloud. And so we have a view of that field every single year. And whenever we add something new, it just automatically turns on. So for example, we turned on five new pathogens this year and you know, growers were really surprised who had the test done last year. They were able to look in there and say, wow, I didn't realize that you guys had tested for that. Well, as I said, we're collecting the entire soil biology the entire microbiome. So whenever we turn on a new algorithm to identify a specific thing, it automatically uh, populates. So they'll have, you know, 10 years from now, they can look and see everything that happened in that field from a biology standpoint. And that's an interesting idea that I guess I had, hadn't occurred to me because, again, if you're basing it off of whatever, let's say, sticky traps, you can't go back and get the sticky traps from, from a year or two ago. Uh, if you didn't do it, you didn't do it. But in your case, you've mapped the soil biome. You know, you already have it. Now, you may not have identified that pathogen yet, but like you said, three years from now, maybe you do. And all of a sudden, now you can say, well, let's go back and run that analysis. And, and now we'll see if that was there, or how long it's been there. Well, not only that, but the beauty of what we do in our bioinformatics is once we start building correlations between pathogens, beneficials, and really start answering some questions, you know, as we map the soil microbiome, those will become available from past reports. So you'll be able to see historically, how did the biology of my soil change over time? And I don't want to make it sound complex. The analysis is complex, but the readouts, the data, what we provide back to the grower 
is really intuitive. So there's so many chapters to the story of what happens in a farmer's field. And really all we can see today is the first chapter and the last chapter. First chapter being planting, last chapter being harvest, but we can't see anything in the middle. And so what we're, write, what we're doing is we're writing those chapters from the beginning to the end. We've been talking from Stein Seed Company perspective with Pattern Ag for a little while, almost a year now, of how we can help some of our customers. And so I know we have an offer that we're launching here in 2023 for some of our select customers. Can you talk a little bit about that offering? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be partnering with, uh, or we're very excited to be partnering with Stein Seed. It's an extremely valuable tool that you are providing to a set of your customers in being able to identify corn rootworm, cyst nematode, and sudden death syndrome in advance of the season so that you can help them with the right variety and hybrid selections and seed treatments. That in and of itself is super valuable. And then they have the opportunity, if they would like to, buy up on the performance panel and the pro-nutrient panel uh, should they wish to do that. The, um, the affordability of it is just unbelievable for them, for the insights that they get. But uh, Stein, your Stein representative, will be able to sit down with the grower and help them with critical decisions on those three things. And I, I really want to emphasize the sudden death syndrome uh, because it is far underutil- uh, seed treatments are far underutilized based upon what we're seeing in the pressures in the fields. And so your ability to provide that insight to them is extremely valuable. Well, and, and it seems to me like there, there's certain diseases or pathogens that sometimes are seem hard to predict, right? So it has to be weather, has to be environment, has to be whatever the interaction is. But I have to believe that if you have this soil map, doesn't mean you're going to know exactly what's going to happen next year, but boy, I got to think it would help you to at least know what potentially is out there for you in a way that's probably more profound than if you didn't have that soil map. So I think that's that's significant. And the reason we like the uh, the pressure panel service is like you said, you know, obviously we're in the seed business. And so very, very big decisions for growers to make is one, you know, do I need a corn worm technology or, or not? And uh, I think this goes all the way to helping them determine if that's something that's important to them. On the soybean side, obviously, soybean cyst nematode and and what is the pressure and what is the need, how do we need to address that? Yeah, I mean, the most interesting conversations that we have with growers is when they first see their results because they've never seen anything like this before. And I can give a couple of specific examples where we sat down with growers in southern Minnesota and everybody swore that there was no sudden death syndrome in the area. Well, the, the levels that came back were 2 to 3x, so they were in the top 90th percentile of uh, inoculum that's in the soil. And then they start linking that back to things that they see, that they saw in the field, and things that they always wondered. You know, why am I capped at 50 bushels per acre when my neighbors are getting 70, right? It begins to answer those questions. Um, for corn rootworm, it begins to answer the questions not just presence of, but the pressure. So, you know, there's multiple decisions that can be made for corn rootworm. If you've got extreme pressure, you're not only going to need above and below ground protection, but you could also need an in in and insecticide as well. And so knowing those things in advance, especially with the price increases that are occurring, the shortages of products that are occurring because of supply chain issues is critically important for the next season. Well, and, and, and to your point, I think the last episode of the podcast, we talked to Greg Tilke, who's a soybean cyst nematode specialist here in Iowa. And, and one of the things he talked about is great seed genetics sometimes mask the real problem underneath. Mm -hmm. And so here again, this is about getting that baseline, right? Saying, hey, listen, I know it may not necessarily look bad, but but did you know, you know, here's here's what your counts are, egg counts for cyst, or here's what your, you know, corn worm rating is. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to really evaluate that and decide, okay, you know, maybe it was, didn't look bad, but maybe there is something we need to look at taking action on. Yeah, other insights, uh, and that was a great podcast, by the way. If you have soybean cyst nematode and you also have sudden death syndrome and you don't know either one of those two things, 
Soybean cyst nematode acts as a vector for sudden death syndrome, which means that if you've got it, it could actually express at a much higher level than it would if there was no so, uh, soybean cyst nematode there by itself. So knowing the presence and the pressure of those two things together really informs whether you could lose you know, 10, 20 bushels of uh, soybeans. So really some of these pathogens or pests might even be considered a trigger <laughs> uh, pathogen for other other problems. Yeah, there are definitely vectors, and they, there are definitely correlations between those. And those are things that we're beginning to, or that our data science team is working on so that we can build those correlations and tell you, okay, you've got this, you've got these three things, and this is, how, this is what you can expect to uh, see in your field. So our sales reps for Stein will be out here in the, in the summer and, and in the fall talking with their customers about pattern egg solution that's available through Stein. And what else does a grower need to know and understand about the pattern egg solution? Obviously, they'll be talking to their Stein rep, but what would you like them to know about the service? It's white glove. So there's very little to no lift from, you know, really anybody involved in the process except for pattern egg. And the thing that I want uh, people to understand is this should be part of the seed selection decision. This is not a standalone product. This is, this is an addition to the conversation when you sit down and you start talking about seed. Having that informed information is critical to ensure the success of that seed and pushing another 5 to 15 bushels of soybeans, you know, another 10 to 20 bushels of corn is understanding those things and that and that conversation needs to take place this fall. So that's really how you use that data. Um, it's a super simple process. Pick out the fields that you want to uh, sample. We upload the boundaries. We turn. Uh, we send the samplers out. We turn the data back around to the uh, to the grower and to the dealer within two weeks, and you've got your information there to make decisions on that field that you've never seen or been able to uh, you know obtained before. And like you said, you've got, you know, 40, 40 crop years in you, you've got 40 chances to get it right. Yep. And this is an opportunity to kind of hopefully stack the deck in, in your favor, maybe with a little additional information. Yeah. I mean, you know, helping the American farmer is very critical to us. And we had decisions at, at the very inception of this company. Do we want to take this into high value crops? Well, if you're going to fundamentally improve agriculture and lead to the next revolution, you need to go into the high commodity crops. Corn and soybeans, number one. We'll eventually go to other ones, but we want to help the American farmer where the margins are the lowest, and we want to help them push higher yield so that they can have more money in the bank at the end of the season. So um, obviously for us as a seed company, corn and soybeans are, are important to us. You mentioned other crops. Are there slated other crops that you're planning to introduce? Yeah, we'll, we will in the near future. We're not ready to announce those crops, but we've got about two or three that we're looking at right now. And it's not a trivial process to add a new crop or a new pathogen. You know, there's a lot of data science and a lot of validation that has to occur uh, behind the scenes in order to make sure that you what you're providing back to that grower is absolutely accurate. So uh, we will be adding crops uh, down the road, but for 2023, we're going to be very sharply focused on corn and soybeans. So, and, and like I said, our, you know, Stein sales reps will be out talking with their customers about uh, the pattern egg solution. But for listeners or growers who, you know, want to do some of their own research, where, where would you direct them to find out more information? Yeah, uh, pattern.ag, pattern.ag, and you can find your local regional sales manager. We have really two uh, teams in the field. One are regional sales managers, and they, they work with our dealer network. And then we have a customer success team, and which really sets us apart from any other company because after the sale and after the results are there, we want to make sure that they've got a point of contact so that they can ask any technical questions. If there's any troubleshooting that needs to go on, you're going to talk to an actual live human that's located in the Midwest. And all of those folks are located at Pattern. Ag. So what do you wish that a grower knew about your company and what you do? You know, there's a lot of science involved. It's pretty daunting when you look at the amount of data that you guys work with. But if you boil it down, what do you want growers to understand about what your company does? Well, a couple of things. First, we take the super complex and we make it really simple. And, you know, as I, as I mentioned before, the, the most important thing 
that you can provide is insights that to inform simple decisions that have big impact, financial impact, right? So the second thing that I want them to know about pattern is how passionate we are about helping the farmer. Generally, we are pretty product agnostic. So we want to help inform decisions that are going to help Stein Seeds um, inform the right traits, varieties, hybrids, things like that. And so what we're doing is we really want to help them push top end yield higher than, uh, than what they've been able to achieve before by providing insights on things that they've never seen. And you mentioned there the data. I mean, obviously, there's various mechanisms right now by which growers are collecting and storing data. You're kind of platform agnostic that way. Is that right? I mean, most of the platforms that are out there. You guys can work with data platforms. Yeah, we've got API connections with all the major uh, companies. By the end of this quarter, we'll have API connections with all of them. So we'll be able to layer that management data that they're collecting on their machines on top of what we're collecting, and they'll have a, a bigger view of what's happened on that farm than they've ever seen before. We've been visiting today with Mike Tweedy, Vice President and Head of Sales for Pattern Ag. Mike, thanks so much for joining us and sharing the story of Pattern Ag and the new Stein customer offering. I appreciate you joining us today. Thanks very much for having me. I truly enjoyed this. Well, that's our time for today. I want to thank our guests and our listeners for joining us for another episode of the Stein Seedcast. We'll be back again soon with more expert interviews and insights about all things Stein. And to never miss an episode, subscribe to the Stein Seedcast wherever podcasts are found. Subscribe to the Stein Seedcast wherever podcasts are found. To learn more about Stein and its elite corn and soybean genetics, visit steinseed.com. Stein has yield.